Welcome to week five of the Mansfield Free Public Library's 2021 Summer Reading Program, Tales and Tales. For our Animal of the Week, this week we are covering turtles. If you are interested in learning more about turtles, we have quite a few books you can borrow from the library. All About Turtles, written and illustrated by Jim Arnosky. Have you ever wondered about turtles? How many kinds of turtles are there? Why do turtles have shells? What do turtles eat? How old can turtles live to be? This book answers all of these questions and more. It's all about turtles. Turtles are reptiles with shells. Like all reptiles, turtles cannot regulate their body temperature from within. They warm themselves by moving to a sunlit spot. They cool themselves by finding shade, or if they are aquatic, getting into water. Turtles that live in northern climates burrow into mud and hibernate in winter. Turtles that live in the sea migrate in winter from colder to warmer areas. Worldwide, there are more than 200 species of turtles. All turtles fall into these groups. Freshwater turtles, saltwater turtles, and land-dwelling turtles. The cooter, spotted turtle, and painted turtle are all small freshwater turtles. They are almost entirely aquatic. Those are, those are those three. Tortoises are exclusively land-dwelling, so that's a desert tortoise. Box turtles are land-dwelling turtles with hinged bottom shells that can close tightly. Wood turtles and terrapins look similar but are different types of turtles. Both spend as much time in water as they do on land. Snapping turtles and softshell turtles are large freshwater turtles. Leatherback sea turtles are the largest turtles in the world. They can grow to 8 feet long and weigh over 1,000 pounds. All sea turtles live in salt water. These two pages show the top and bottom view of a typical turtle shell. Turtle shells are made of colorless bone. It is the hard, horn-like skin covering the shell that gives a turtle its color and markings. The same is true for a turtle's skull. Hard skin stretches tightly over a turtle shell, forming an outer, waterproof shield that protects the shell. A turtle's top shell is called a carapace, the individual sections of the carapace are called plates. A turtle's bottom shell is called a plastron. Depending on the turtle species, the bottom shell will be small, like the one shown here, or large enough to cover the entire bottom area of the turtle. The turtle skull showing large large eye sockets, big powerful jaw, and sharply hooked beak prove that turtles have no teeth. The huge shell of a sea turtle is actually thin and lightweight in proportion to the turtle's heavy body. The large front flippers and muscular neck of a sea turtle cannot be drawn inside the shell. Sea turtles have flippers instead of legs. The long and powerful front flippers are used to paddle swiftly through the water. The wide hind flippers act as rudders for steering. Turtles are intelligent and always alert. Turtles have excellent eyesight. They can detect even the slightest movement of distant objects. 
Often, they will see you before you see them. They also have a keen sense of smell. Turtles have no visible ears. It is not known if turtles actually hear sound or sense sound only as vibrations in the ground or in water. When it comes to touch, turtles are very sensitive. A turtle feels the world within its feet, its tail, and its entire shell. A turtle's shell has many nerves running through it, making it the turtle's largest sensing organ. Very young turtles feed mostly on insects. As they grow larger, turtles become more omnivorous, eating a variety of plants as well as insects, mollusks, worms, crustaceans, and fish. Many species of turtle will even eat carrion, dead animals. Sea turtles will eat eelgrass, crabs, conches, clams, oysters, fish, sponges, and even jellyfish. Snapping turtles eat anything they can catch, from fish to floating ducks. The least predatory of all turtles are tortoises. These shy, burrow-digging turtles feed almost exclusively on plants. The only tortoises that live in the United States are the gopher tortoises. Gopher tortoises share their burrows with other animals, including rattlesnakes. Wherever you see a gopher tortoise, you must take care and watch all around. The tortoise could have a rattlesnake for a roommate. All turtles reproduce in the same way. Sometime after mating with a male, the female turtle digs a nest hole into which she deposits her eggs. The number of eggs varies from 1 to 130, depending on the turtle species. After laying all her eggs, the turtle covers the nest hole with loose soil and then abandons it. The sun-warmed earth, not the turtle mother, incubates the turtle eggs. Not all turtle eggs get a chance to develop fully. Many are sniffed out and eaten by raccoons and other predators. Egg-eating predators cannot find every turtle nest. Lots of baby turtles do hatch and dig their way up out of the ground. Hatchling turtles may go directly to the nearest water where they are less vulnerable to attacks by shore birds, or if the hatchlings are a land-loving species of turtle, they may hurry to the safety of woodland or brush, where they can hide amid the leaf litter on the ground. Here are five distinctly different species of baby turtles, shown a little larger than actual size so you can see their individual shell patterns. You have the green sea turtle, a snapping turtle, a painted turtle, a box turtle, and a red-eared turtle. With only their shells to protect them, baby turtles have been making the perilous journey from nest hole to habitat since the days of the dinosaurs. Turtles live long lives. Some species live to be more than 100 years old. But even a day-old turtle knows its way in the world. The End Mossy by Jan Brett. On a misty, moisty morning, a young turtle stood at the edge of a lily pad pond. Her name was Mossy. Mossy liked this damp, cool place. She spent so much time here that curricules of moss began to grow on her carapace until her shell was covered with them. As the spring days got warmer, tiny ferns unfurled and wildflowers began to bloom. Soon, Mossy's shell was home to an amazing garden. Mossy liked to look at her reflection in Lilypad Pond. 
and see what was growing in her garden. Every day brought a surprise, a new flower, or perhaps a delicious wild strawberry. Mossy's garden was growing wider and taller. One day, Mossy was standing by Lily Pad Pond when the water rippled and two ruby red eyes looked up at her. It was a handsome turtle she had seen before. Scoot had never seen a lady turtle like Mossy. He thought her garden was pretty, but it was Mossy who made his heart beat fast. She was breathtaking. Scoot scrambled up the bank and walked toward Mossy. Entranced by those ruby eyes, Mossy made her way into the open glade toward Scoot. Just then, Dr. Carolina, on her morning walk with her niece, Tori, spotted Mossy. Gently, Dr. Carolina picked her up. She's perfect for the museum. Never had Dr. Carolina's museum had a wonder as extraordinary as a garden-growing turtle. She and Tori made a home for Mossy in a viewing pavilion with plants, a reflecting pool, and everything they thought a turtle would need. But Mossy already had everything she needed back at Lilypad Pond, and she longed to go home and find her new friend. Every day, Scoot waited for Mossy but Mossy did not come back. All summer, visitors came to see Mossy and her famous garden. They watched her eat raspberries and mealy worms, mushrooms, and lettuce. But Mossy didn't seem happy to Tori, and Dr. Carolina was too busy to notice. Mossy was lonely for Scoot, she had stopped looking at her garden in the reflecting pool because it made her remember those ruby red eyes, shining like jewels, peering at her from Lilypad Pond. Thoughts of Scoot only made her sad. Snow fell outside, but inside the museum, Mossy's garden kept growing, and people flocked to see her. Dr. Carolina was thrilled that Mossy had made her museum famous. Today, Tori and her class had come to see Mossy. The meteorites and geos amazed the children. They loved the woodland diorama, the butterflies and the shells. Finally, Dr. Carolina said it was time to see a special exhibit. The children gathered around the viewing pavilion. At first, they didn't see Mossy. Then she started to walk. Her magnificent garden swaying back and forth. The little turtle captivated the children. Mossy is a special turtle, Dr. Carolina told them. Her garden grows and changes all year round. She is never hungry or cold, so she is safe living in the museum. Here with us, Mossy could live to be a hundred years old. <sighs> Tori frowned. She loved the museum. She had helped her aunt collect wonderful things on their walks. But Mossy was the first living creature that Dr. Carolina had taken to live in her museum. Is that why she looks so sad? Tori wondered. Do you think Mossy is happy here? Tori asked her aunt. Does she have any turtle friends? The children asked. No, but here we have all the opportunity to see her. Dr. Carolina paused. The children had given her an idea. On the first day of spring, a sign on the front of the museum read, Closed. Do not disturb. Two women arrived at the back of the museum. Dr. Carolina and Tori were there to meet them. Everyone wondered what this meant. One day passed, two, day pa two days passed, then three. After a week, everyone was invited inside. Dr. Carolina introduced the two mystery women. Please meet Flora and Fauna, she said. The curtain was pulled aside, revealing a portrait of Mossy. Larger than life, 
with her garden painted in glowing detail. Flora had painted all the plants. Fauna had painted Mossy. Together, the artists had captured a moment in time that would never fade. Everyone cheered and clapped. At dusk, Dr. Carolina gently, gently put Mossy in a collection basket. Come with me, she said to Tori, and off they went to take Mossy to Lilypad Pond. Together they said goodbye to their garden-growing friend and put her in the glade next to the waterfall, exactly where Dr. Carolina had found her. Mossy was home. The next morning, the warm spring sun woke up Scoot from his bed beneath the leaves. He opened his ruby eyes and saw Mossy. Their year apart vanished into the past. At the museum, the portrait of Mossy continued to amaze visitors. What an extraordinary work of art and nature, they exclaimed. The world changed as the years went by and Tori grew up, but Mossy's portrait is there in Dr. Carolina's museum for all to see, not knowing that not far away, on the misty, moisty edge of Lilypad Pond, an old turtle still stands. Her name is Mossy. The End One Tiny Turtle by Nicola Davies Illustrated by Jane Chapman Far, far out to sea, land is only a memory. An empty sky touches the water. Just beneath the surface is a tangle of weed and driftwood, where the tiny creatures cling. This is the nursery of a sea turtle. Passing in a boat, you might not notice the turtle. Not much bigger than a bottle cap top, she hides in the green shadows. She's a baby, so her shell is soft as old leather. Just a tiny fish bite could rip it open. But the turtle is safe in her world of weed and snaps her beak at tiny crabs and shrimps. The turtle swims around, flapping her long front flippers like wings. She is flying underwater. She pokes her pinprick nostrils through the silver surface to take a quick breath, so fast, blink, and you'd miss it. Then she's gone, diving down into her secret life again. For three or four years, maybe more, the turtle rides out the storms and floats through the hot calms. Steadily, she outgrows her nursery Nobody sees her leave, but when you look for her, she has vanished all the same. A year or two later, she turns up close to land. Bigger than a dinner plate now, she's not a fish snack anymore. Her shell is hard as armor. Her head is tough as a helmet. She's grown into her name, Loggerhead. She has come to eat crabs. Millions swim up from deep water to breed in the shallows. Their shells crack as easily as hen's eggs in her heavy jaws. But in a week, the feast is over and Loggerhead disappears again. Loggerhead wanders far and wide in search of food. In summer, to cool seaweed jungles, where she finds juicy clams and shoals of shrimps and in winter to turquoise lagoons, warm as a bath, where she can munch among corals. Loggerhead may tra travel thousands of miles, but she leaves no trace or track for you to follow. Only good luck will catch you a glimpse of her. For 30 years, you might not find her. Then one summer night, she arrives on the beach where she was born. 
She's found her way here, sensing north and south like a compass needle. Feeling the current and the warmth of the waves, she remembers the taste of the water, here and the sound of the surf. Loggerhead has grown in her wandering years. She's big as a barrel now. Floating in the sea, she weighs nothing, but on land, she's heavier than a man. So every flipper step is a struggle. And her eyes stream with salty tears, which help keep them free of sand. Loggerhead makes her nest where the sea won't reach. Scooping carefully with her hind flippers, she makes a steep, deep hole. Inside, she lays her eggs, like a hundred squidgy ping-pong balls. Afterwards, she covers them with sand to hide her nest from hungry mouths. Then, Loggerhead is gone again, back to her secret life. Left behind under the sand, her eggs stay deep and safe. Baby turtles grow inside. And before the summer's over, they wriggle from their shells. Above them on the beach, a hundred eyes watch, on the lookout for a meal. So the hatchlings wait until night. Then they burst through the sand and skitter towards the sea. In the dark, claws and beaks and grabbing paws miss only one young turtle. One day, she'll remember this beach and come back. But now, she dives under the waves and swims, swims and swims, out into the arms of the ocean, far, far out to sea. Land becomes a memory, waiting to wake in the head of the little turtle. For today's craft, you, we will be making a little turtle using the God's Eye weaving or wrapping method. The instructions for this, along with most of the supplies, are in either the grab-and-go kit from the library or the handouts that... the printouts that can be found in the video description below. Uh, if you grab the grab-and-go kit, there's enough supplies to make one turtle. If you would like to make more turtles, it, it's very easy to do and very fun. To make a single one of these cute little turtles, you will need three popsicle sticks some green paint or a green marker, some yarn, some white glue, a pair of scissors, and a black marker. Okay. Our first step for the craft this week, we are going to take our three popsicle sticks and paint or color them green. Once your popsicle sticks are dry, you're going to take all three of them and glue them together to look like a little, either a flower or an asterisk, if you know what that is. But you're gonna put a little bit of glue to glue the middle of each popsicle stick together and stack them up so they look like that. And then you're going to let your glue dry. Now that the glue is dry, you're going to need your yarn. If you got the grab and go kit, I gave you some. If not, you can do one color, you can do multiple colors, it's up to you. But what you're gonna do is, you're going to wrap the yarn around the middle. I did about three times, maybe two. And you're gonna do it each for each joint. Kind of like that. From here, we're going to start the 
bulk of the weaving to get it to look like this. If you've ever been to a camp program and they've had you do a God's Eye in Arts and Crafts, it's similar to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my yarn, I'm going to put it over top of the popsicle stick, wrap it around, go to the next popsicle stick, wrap it around, next popsicle stick, wrap it around, to the next popsicle stick and wrap it around, Oop, there's the tail of that one, and wrap it around, the next popsicle stick, and I'm just going to keep going and doing this over and over. If you run out of a color of yarn with the grab and go kit or you want to change colors, all you need to do is just tie on the next color when you come to the end of your first piece of yarn. And then you just keep going. When you are either satisfied with the size of the turtle shell or you've run out of yarn completely, what you're going to do is you're going to flip it over to the underside. You can see that's where all of my knots kind of ended up and it doesn't really look like a turtle shell there. I'm going to take the end and I can either tie it to some loose threads here from when I was changing colors, or I can just kind of sort of glue it down. But right now I'm gonna tie it. Yeah. And to make it look a little bit better, I'm gonna trim up some of my edges. But when you've hit this point, you can either glue it or tie it down. Um, I'm going to add a dollop of glue as well, just because, just right here where it ends. And then I'm going to let that dry. When that's kind of all done, I'm then going to come flip my turtle back over and I'm going to take my plain black marker and give my turtle a little face and some toes on the feet. So let's go with... a little happy face. Some toes on the feet. <clears throat> so that's it for this week's story time. I hope you had a fun time with all of our stories and with the craft. And I will see you next week. Thanks, bye.